worth would you buy a $304,200 plus on roads, four-door BMW M6 Grand Coupe when you can get a BMW M4 Coupe and a decent X5 for less? The answer is simple actually, because you can. Here is a car that oozes understated class. It's subtle, yet aggressive at the same time. It speaks volumes to those that know what it is and yet blends in amongst the folk for which it's not intended to impress. It's practical, yet sporty, and it's usable as a daily, but also fun when things get serious. It's a near perfect blend of two worlds. But, it's by no means perfect. Here is the thing, we kind of miss the V10 powered M5 of old. And with this current generation of M5 and M6, which came out 5 years ago, the shine is starting to wear off a little bit. But BMW updated the M6 with a midlife tweak a little while ago and it's time we revisit the V8 monster. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, the competition package is now standard. That brings the power from the 4.4-liter M twin power turbo 8-cylinder petrol engine up to 441 kilowatts and 700 newton meters of torque, an increase of 19 kilowatts and 20 newton meters. It also brings the 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time down to a ridiculous 3.9 seconds. We are talking about a car that weighs two tons. There are some visual enhancements and interior changes that came through from 2015 build, but you'll need to be a BMW enthusiast to really spot or care about them. For those interested, these include digital radio and tire pressure monitor on the technology side, with the center console now in high gloss black central display with frameless design as well as black chrome accent lines and new contrast stitching. Exterior changes include a minor refresh for the front bumper and grille as well as larger and lower air inlets and lower lip spoiler. Other than that, the other changes are applied to the M6 Grand Coupe lighting, with adaptive LEDs, LED front fogs and BMW selective beam, high beam that doesn't blind other drivers, now standard. Power delivery of the mighty V8 goes through a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. It's a bit old school, this one, for it jerks both at low speed and when going flat out. It doesn't necessarily suit the character of the M6 Grand Coupe, being a cruiser more than a race car. But it's rapid firing when push comes to shove and in the wet, with the right foot flat to the floor. The rear has momentary loss of traction on each and every gear change, which is sensational for those that love a car with some character. In fact, the biggest problem we had with the M6 Grand Coupe was traction. Initially, we excused it for the wet roads. But even when the weather gods blessed us with perfect sunshine, the mighty BMW failed to ever truly get its power down. The only way one would achieve that claimed 0 to 100 km per hour time is on a perfect surface, on brand new tires and using launch control. Our test car struggled to get going each and every time we asked it to accelerate. The yellow traction control light flashed more than we've ever seen in a BMW and when MDM mode was engaged, it just meant smoke from the rear tires rather than traction. In saying all that, once you actually get traction to the road, the BMW is an absolute weapon. It makes you feel queasy with how much torque it puts out and how much it slams you back into the seat.